All right, guys, welcome back. Chris with Dirt Road Life, and uh, the project at hand here is getting this heat exchanger tied into my wood boiler and uh, my hot water, domestic hot water heater. So um, how I'm going to do that is uh, I've got on my on my outdoor boiler manifold here, I've got, so I'm going to do this. This is my um, manifold for my outdoor boiler. I've got zone one, zone two for heating, um, supply, return, check valves on the return side, valves on the on the return side to bleed air out if you need to. Um, but on this uh, this third leg here, this is set up is is a future, and I'm that's what I'm going to take and uh, come off of for my for my heat exchanger there. I'll have hot water into the heat exchanger and hot water or water back to the boiler here. Um, that'll be one side of the plate heat exchanger. Then on the other side of the plate heat exchanger, I've got my water supply here from my well, and that comes into the top of the hot water tank here. So um, I'll cut that, come into one side of the, uh, of the heat exchanger and out the other side into the boiler. So um, that's the plan. So I think I got everything here. I got clamps, um, some pipe dope, which I put these fittings in with. Um, cutoff wheel just to cut some um, of these old clamps off uh, so I can tie in my new packs um, PEX shears uh, what else PEX um, hangers PEX clamps and a clamp tool so um, I think I got everything I'm gonna start by measuring out some uh, three-quarter inch packs so that I can uh, I can run from here to uh, the exchanger um, I'm going to mount the exchanger right about here. buying packs make sure you price it as both uh, the the sticks and the rolls because a hundred foot roll was only like ten dollars more than two twenty foot sticks so just keep that in mind
Now that control valve is not 100% tight. Water tight. Uh. I don't even know if I'm going to need to clamp that or not. Yeah, I better. I can just cut it off. When I'm ready to pop it on the heat exchanger there, good to go. Alright, now if I'm looking at this right, um, here's my water line, my pump is up in the well, but I need to shut it off here, and then it comes up, it goes out to an outside spigot, that's already off, that that's, doesn't matter for this. I'm also going to turn it off, I think, here, at the filter. And that's off. And then uh, it comes from the filter and it goes into my UV light, out of my UV, over to this T. And this T branches off and goes to both the hot water heater, the entering side, and also to my domestic water manifold over here on this side. So I should have everything turned off. All right, I just turned the breaker off for my uh, hot water tank. And now I'm going to drain it. All right, so right here is my feed line that goes and feeds cold water to the hot water tank. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to cut that real low here, pretty close to this PEX fitting, just because I want to have be sure that I have enough to get over to here. I don't want to have to splice a piece in to make this longer. What I can do is put a new piece in from here to here, but I just don't want this piece too short. So give yourself plenty of room. everything off but part of me thought that was still going to spray everywhere. why you leave that long. I needed all of that, so I certainly made it easier with all of it. Water comes in and out here on this side, you want to do basically the opposite with your with your hot water from your boiler. So my outdoor boiler is going to come in the bottom and out the top and that helps with heat transfer. Basically the water comes in this way to the tank and in this way back to the boiler. So basically they're, they're going the opposite direction of each other and that gives the best heat transfer. So you can actually <clears throat> turn this valve on, this control valve, 
manually by just pushing and there it's on turn this on start circulating water back to the boiler over here All right, so that wasn't getting hot over there. <clears throat> what I did was close all my return valves on my actually heating zones and only have the uh, valve open on my heat exchanger zone. And what that does is it basically pushes all the water through this one loop, pushes that air back to the boiler, which is an open boiler, and then it just escapes into the, into the garage there. So it's starting to get hot already. All right, so here's the finished install. I ended up moving this closer to the hot water tank because I had a leak in this elbow. I had to take it apart anyway, and I felt like the closer you get it, the more effective it's gonna be anyway. So I did that. Um, I found out that it isn't, it is not going to work as a thermal siphon. It, it will not exchange water when it's just sitting here with colder uh, uh, water that's in the tank and hotter water that's in here. It will not do that. Um, a video I watched, uh, I had a guy that set his up like this and he said that will work. It will not. I've you know, been down here a bunch of times. The only time that this is gonna get hot here is when you are basically filling the tank. So water's coming in, going through the heat exchanger, going into your tank and exchanging heat with the boiler lines here and here, supply and return. So um, found that out. The other thing is if you want an on-demand system, if you want it to basically, if you want to run this dry and have instant hot water, you're going to need a much bigger uh, heat exchanger than what I have. This is like a three by five or something, three by, uh, three by eight maybe um, heat exchanger. And it's not big enough. It doesn't have the surface area at 20 plates um, to exchange that heat fast enough so that this could be instantaneous heat, uh, hot water. So um, keep that in mind, especially if you have like a lot of people in your family. So right now this is working to preheat the water coming into the tank um, and it's gonna drastically reduce the power required to run this hot water heater for the six months out of the year that I'm running the boiler outside. I had all these parts laying on the shelf. None, of, I didn't have to buy anything besides some PEX clamps. I didn't have enough clamps and uh, you know, I don't know, this is probably 15 years ago. I don't know how old this tank is. Uh, actually, I do. Um, six years, so it was about in 09. So it's about 13 years old now. So figure probably electricity rates have almost doubled. So I bet you this thing costs almost $1,000 a year in energy. Um, and obviously this is probably, I don't know how they do the energy guide of how many people are, you know, in a family or whatever, they're kind of figuring that on. But um, I'm guessing that this will cut my, my electric bill for this piece of equipment by 30%, you know, um, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be half because for it to be half, that would have to be he heating all of my hot water 100% for six months out of the year and it's not doing that um, right now. But, uh, you know, anything you can do, especially with energy prices the way they are, why would you not do it? So. Um, I think it, was, it works good. I might, I'll probably make some changes to this in the future. If I do, I'll certainly make a video on that and tell you guys what, what I did and how much better or whatever it works. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you do, please consider liking, subscribing, and uh, hitting the notification bell for the channel. It helps out the channel a lot. It gets our videos um, up higher so that they, uh, they show up to other people. And um, I wanna wish everybody a Merry Christmas because it's actually Christmas day. I just came home to um, check on the boiler and my dog and uh, headed back down to be with the family here shortly. So um, thanks for watching. Merry Christmas. We'll see you guys on the next one.